other in the world. I say, Amen. Okay, <clears throat> my thought. Okay. Double portion. Next week we start the book of Devarim or Deuteronomy. There's a lot of interesting things in here. <laughs> three days like this <laughs> anyways um, in all this so I guess one of the things I want to talk about is <clears throat> the tribes of Reuben and God Wanting territory on the east side, not wanting to inherit land in the on the west side of the river, and um, also because we just got done talking about vows and obligations, right, at the beginning, and so <clears throat> they come to Moses, and they're like. You know, this, this land here that we just conquered here is good for cattle. And so we'd like to stay here and have this as our portion, our inheritance. And I do believe that that is what they wanted to do. They didn't want to go in with the tribes to help the... Right? I think Moses knew their heart. I, I know I hear people say that he just didn't understand what they were saying. He just kind of took it the wrong way at first but I, I believe that being a prophet for one a prophet of God a true prophet of God that he discerned what was really in their hearts right and that's exactly what he goes on you know this fathers who I sent into the land to spy it out they came back with an evil report and caused the people to be persuaded and disheartened. Even what had done, he defeated the Egyptian army, made up uh, stories that there were giants in the land that were, made us look like grasshoppers, you know? But they, they used those type of fears and, and mythology to try to get the people to say no we don't want to go in there you just brought us out here to die you know and so God punished them for one day for one year that they went into the land of spies so 40 days so 40 years and they're just coming to the end of that now they're just coming to the end of that and all of a sudden these guys come up and they are like we don't want to go into the land but we'll take this as our possession here because it's 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 got good land for grazing and everything for our cattle and everything. Lots of cattle and stuff. And Moses, he knows their heart and he says, he says um, are, your, uh, are your brothers to go to war while you stay here? Besides, why are you trying to discourage the people of Israel from crossing into the land of Adonai, the, into the land Adonai gave them? <clears throat> this is what your fathers did when I sent them from the land. For when they went up to the Eshkol Valley and saw the land of Israel so that they wouldn't enter the land. Out of anger blazed up on that day and he swore none of the people aged 20 or out of Egypt will see the land. I swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov because they have followed me. Um, I'm sorry. None of these people, aged 20 or more, who came out of Egypt will see the land. I swore to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov 
because they haven't followed me unreservedly, except Caleb, the son of Yefuna, the Kenizi, and Yosha, the son of Nun, because they have followed Adonai unreservedly. Thus Adonai's anger blazed against Israel, so that he made them wander here and there in the desert forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of Adonai had died out. Now you, another brood of sinners, or vipers is what it says in the Hebrew, really, um, <clears throat> have arisen in your father's place to increase still more the fierce anger of Adonai towards Israel. For if you turn away from him, he will leave them in the desert again, and thus you will cause the destruction of this people. So Moses knows it's in their heart. And God tells them what he needs to say. But we're also looking here... Um, in the future with Israel, too, where God says in Jeremiah, what have I done that have caused you to, to depart from me, to ignore me, to leave me alone? Haven't I done all these great things, and yet you're going after things that are nothing, after gods that don't exist, after gold and silver and, and wood that can't protect? You know? Fine. Call them to protect you. Let them protect you and see see what happens, right? <clears throat> and so this here, and the same thing. The, um, um, uh, what was the tree? Oh, a fig tree, right? It didn't give the it, it's leafing, right? But there's no figs on it yet. And and a lot of people say, well, probably wasn't the right, it wasn't in season yet. But it was a it was a teaching, it was a lesson that it was trying to that <coughs> that uh, we should be trusting God fully, wholeheartedly, in our walk with Him, unreservedly. It says because they didn't they didn't follow God unreservedly. They died in the desert. Uh, those that uh, for Judah, as, as Jeremiah is talking about, didn't follow God. They, they, well, you might, um, they went with what was in. What was in was the false gods. Our God is boring. Our, you know, our God doesn't let us do these things, so we're going to go this way, you know. Even though he's the one who's taking care of us and, and okay, in peace, but you know we don't want to follow that, and we want to we want to have fun. We don't care about doing what's right. We want to have fun. We want to can be Mary or Sarah or, or not uh, be Mary. <laughs> um, but. Gordon want to have fun, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what we see here too is that is that Moses knows their heart. God knows their heart, so God lets them know, and so He rebukes. Them. And sometimes that's what it takes. You know, that's what prophets came for. It wasn't to to tell Israel that oh, you're so wonderful, everything's going good. You know, we're gonna go out and have a nice picnic today. You know, all these different things, right? They're there to warn Israel that, hey, you get back on the right path, right? <clears throat> and so Moses does the job of a prophet right there. And in his rebuking, <laughs> came back to him probably after they did this stuff and realized, uh, yeah, we, that's not what we want to do. So they come back and they say, Here, we will build enclosures for our livestock and cities for our little ones, but we ourselves will be armed and ready for action to march at the head of the people of Israel until we have brought them to their place. Our little ones will stay in the fortified cities here because of the people now living in the land. However, we will not return to our own homes until every man in Israel has taken possession of his land for inheritance. We will not have an inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan, 
westward because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of the yarden eastward. Now, interesting thing here. We know where their heart is still. Okay? It says, um, here we will build enclosures for our livestock and cities for our little ones. Moses sees that. Right? What's important to them was their livestock. Their, their finances were more important than today with a lot of people that they're so enamored with getting wealth that they forget about their children. I mean, we've seen plenty of even TV shows where the rich families let their kids do whatever they want and then they wonder why they're in jail or they're dead or whatever. Uh, what did I do wrong? Well, you didn't pay attention to them. You didn't teach them in the way they should go. Yeah, you didn't raise your child in the way you should go, where they should go. You didn't teach them right from wrong. You gave them everything they wanted. Just to basically just get rid of them out of your attention so you could do what you want to do. Right? And that's basically what it is. Yeah. There's also the people that like their money on drugs and alcohol and don't use money for basic Right. There's people that take their finance do have and food, right? And they, they splurge on all these nothings, drugs, alcohol, games, game machines, <laughs> you name it. The boarding school just to get them out of their hair so they can do, do these things, right? Yeah. And so that's what we see here too, is that basically the cattle, they're, the money, the cattle is more important. And go, oh, we'll put you know the kids in fortified, right? But Moshe says to them, if you will do this, if you will arm yourselves to go before Adonai to the war, and if every one of your soldiers will cross the Yarden before Adonai until it until he has driven out his enemies ahead of him, and if the land has been conquered before Adonai and only turn, then you will be clear before Adonai and before Israel. And this land here will be yours to possess before you. But if you will not do this, then you have sinned against Adonai. And you must understand that your sin will find you out. A lot of people think that they, you know, in darkness, they hide. Anybody sees them, but they don't realize that uh, God is always watching. It's one of the reasons why we wear a kippah and tzitzit, right? It's to remind us that God is always watching us and to remind us of his commandments, right? Yeah, yeah, I think got a shiny spot, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, to, it's a reminder, you know, because we need... We've seen what happened with Israel is that, uh, in, the, in the book of Jeremiah to Judah, is that uh, the priests were supposed to be the ones teaching Torah not just doing the service of the temple. That's why God put them out. Was their job was to teach the commandments of God and for them to live and to be the judges for them to go to when they had issues, right? Um, but they didn't do their job. They didn't do their job. And so also, even though. Israel was bad. I mean, they, they were bad. They were really bad. They uh, really, was really no different. Claims there too that you have, yeah, more idols than you have cities, right? That's a lot. That's a lot, and they, and they forgot God. They forgot what He's done, what He's done for them, thinking that either they've done it for themselves, or um, it's the false gods that they're that they're worshiping they're they're doing it out of they're doing it out of spite but i think because everybody else is doing it so we'll fall in line and that's why yeshua even says you know the the uh road to destruction is wide very wide why because lots of people are going down it it's like a trail you know when you make a trail you know the first few people get the 
what is there's more people it's wider you know and that and that's what we see you know that 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 because of sin that hill has become a high so many people on it for selfish reasons for selfish reasons and this country has so much selfishness in it <clears throat> not everybody but i mean there's a lot of good people who give to helping people in other countries and into our country poor people who can't afford things we're probably one of the greatest countries that do that you know europe used to do that they don't really do that anymore they don't really give much to help poor people and stuff like that and then if of course if you do send money to help organizations like that are in africa and stuff then you're considered a racist because you're trying to make them american it's no you're not like uh what's that guy that does the wells and stuff mr beast, mr. beast? i don't like his name but um but the thing is i watch this guy he gets himself has an organization that goes and builds clean water wells and stuff like that for the people in africa and other places and there's a lot of people like that and that's what we're supposed to do too you know we're not supposed to hoard our money you know we pay for the things we need and and we can live comfortably but we can also give that money to organizations that help other people or you self give it to people those times where cheryl and i would see some homeless people on the road we'd stop and give them money or whatever you know if we had it we would do that um that's what we're supposed to do right Don't be selfish but we see here you know moses hears them and but moses it says okay this is a this is an op making yourselves you've come together as the leaders of your tribe so you can possess the other side so that's why the rabbis teach that's why yeshua teach teaches let your yes be yes your no be no don't don't make vows don't make obligations upon yourself because why because we never keep most of the time we don't keep how many times have we made promises to our kids and and never kept it even though maybe it was out of our hand maybe something came up and we weren't able to do it An emergency came up the kid you know kids remember that well you know you promised to take me here and and you never did yeah, well we got no car accident we couldn't go well still we should have gone you know you you promised they're just we get to go and then i'll find some um so you reverses it he says build in uh cities for your little ones your family first right that's the order it should be your family then your your job or wealth or all these different things your family should be first and really it should be God number one your family others and then yourself right um when i was in the in the military um we always ate first our sergeants and stuff would eat after we got our food and the officers would eat after the sergeants got their food the higher officers would eat after the other ones got their food that's how it worked make sure they get their stuff first then then we can feed ourselves you know something that a lot of people don't understand today who haven't been in the military um it's it's one of sacrifice and even living today we should be understand understand that that when we have children 
Sometimes we have to sacrifice the things that we like to do or wish to do because our responsibility is now for our children. I mean, sometimes we might have time to do those things, right? But family needs to come first. That even means that if we get a job and we realize we don't like it, but there's really nothing else out there at the time, but we got to feed our families and stuff, we need to stay with that until something else comes up. But sometimes we have to put up with that stuff. Sometimes we have to sacrifice what we don't like for what we do like for something we don't like because that's what's there, but it's taking care of our family. Right? Sometimes that's what we have to do. Until hopefully you find something later on. You just don't quit. I mean, there might be certain reasons that, yeah, you might have to quit. Um, but for the most part, don't quit until you find something else to go to. You know? Um, it's like, um, it's like um, Rush Limbaugh used to teach. Also, other people would say, if you want to be successful, learn from somebody who's successful. If you don't want to be successful, not successful. Huh? Or make excuses. Or make excuses, yeah. Procrastinate. Procrastinate. A lot of people do that. Um, and even, you know, in my job, I see we get a lot of young people. And I would say probably one in four young people have a good, healthy work ethic. But three out of those four, forget it. They don't. That's where America is today. That's where, it, you know, can they get a good work ethic? Sure, they can. But it starts with the family first. It starts with the mom and dad as examples, right? And that even means, you know, giving them chores to do. That's part of it. And, and I hear people say, oh, you're just making them the slave. No, we're teaching them responsibility, how to work. Because when you get out of the house, <laughs> I have to laugh at some of these people that you see on TikTok and some of these other places uh, that are crying that, oh, I can't work a 40-hour week. I can't, I can't do this. Everything is so bad. Yeah. Um, I, I, just, I just laugh that, 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 that they're even like that, that you know, their parents... I'm not going to say just their parents, because people make choices. What? I, I wanted to point out there is this one mom that is used to be a mom because every meal for her, like, four-year-old is really, really, really sugary food. Like, her, her breakfast, it was like a diced up donut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's probably a lot of parents that shouldn't be parents, especially yeah. ones that are doing marijuana and other drugs and stuff like that, because it makes them, uh, <coughs> causes them to forget the importance, or, or important or stuff in their life. Or because your ancestors were oppressed, your ancestors were mistreated. You can blame everybody uh, else yeah. for being your oppressor, and you don't have to stand yeah. up and act. Right. Just because your ancestors may have been oppressed and stuff like that doesn't give you the right to oppress other people. But that's one of the reasons they hate us so much yeah. because look at us. Like but yeah, but people, people are, people. yeah. Our people have never done that. We yeah. Up and we just yeah, our people. <laughs> Many times we can read about it, but we're not out there blaming everybody for, for that, right? We're trying to make things good, trying to make change in the hearts. Huh? Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Yeah. Yeah. But there were some good Rockefellers too. So we can't just say everybody. Yeah. And that's just it. We need to take responsibility for what we've done. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So what we have here is that, that one, Moses was able to know what was in their heart what was really in their heart. And you know what? God knows our hearts too. As we read in part of the uh, um, 
uh, 13 principles of Jewish faith, God puts in our heart. He, he created our heart, so he knows what's there, right? And he knows if we're if we're real or if we're fake, you know? So many people out there do things just to be seen by other people, but they're, that's not who they are, really, in reality. And that's why we hear so many different stories. Oh, but they were so nice. Yes, yeah. you know, because so, um, they were fake. Realization should be in God. Just follow him, walk in his ways. It's, it's a lifestyle. We do this every day. We walk in God's commands to the best of our ability. We love God. We pray three times a day as best we can or more, right? Um, we thank God for everything he has given us, right? When Judah went into, into Babylon, <clears throat> it was for several different reasons. But one of the biggest reasons is that everything they had came from and they pretended but my goodness brought this upon me or from the false gods that they were worshiping right and so what did the men of the great assembly do in babylon they came up with blessings for everything blessings to thank god and know that this is where this comes from that god has blessed us so much how can we ever repay god we can't right especially for what Yeshua did for us, right? God sent his only son, right? To, to die in our place, to make uh, a way for us to draw close to and not, so we can make it into the, into, the, into the Messianic age and into the world to come, you know? Um, to, to teach our families correctly, to walk be old, right? And what we see here with uh, with Moses is that God gives them wisdom in this. Back, they discuss it, realize that yeah, we don't want to do that. So let's. How can we do this? Because this is good land. So what can we do? Well, Moses kind of told them. If you are near him, and you will go in ahead of Israel when we go to conquer the land of Canaan and put your children in fortified cities in your cattle and enclosures. As long as you do that and you fulfill your obligation to once conquer the possession, right? That will be your possession. And so it's the same thing with us too, is that God has given us a decision to make too when it comes to him. We can follow his ways wholehearted or to the best of our ability. Our heart desire is to be with God and to enter his kingdom and to be a light to other people, to also bring them with, right? And to enter what? Enter God's rest, right? We want not just ourselves, but we want our family, we want friends, we want other people that we don't even know to be a part of that. We should, right? We don't make fun of people that are doing the wrong thing or stuff like that. We don't do it. We pray for them, right? Or people who are being mean to us, evil. We don't we protect ourselves, but we don't go and attack them, right? We pray for them. Right? Um, so that we too can enter into, that when all this stuff is done here, we then can enter into the front, into the, into the, uh, and then by following God. There. They realize. Not such a good idea what we propose first maybe we need let's, let's take let's really talk about this let's pray about this what we need to do and they came up with the secondary thing which moses approved because he had to kind of tweak it a little bit because their priorities were in the wrong order 
<clears throat> but there they were. And then we do know that after Joshua did conquer the land and stuff, that they did go back. They fulfilled their obligation, their vow, and they went back to their families on the east side, right? And we too, our obligation is to follow God to the best of our ability, to walk in his ways, to be a light to other people of his Torah, of what Yeshua has done for us. Um, Yeshua walked the way we need to walk, and that's the way we need to walk. And, um, and we need to really think about that. You know, where are we at? You know, how much time do we devote to God in prayer every day? Just talking, or just reading His Word, studying His Word, right? Where are we at? But the adversary will take a lot if we choose the other way, right? Yep, he will. So as we go this week and stuff, just think about it, you know, and pray about it. Think about, am I, do I have uh, selfish thoughts? Do I have selfish desires? You know, and we need to think about that because society pushes right now, it's pushing so much of selfishness, you know, instead of selflessness. That's what built this country was selflessness. I mean, there might have been a few other things that are mistakenly as part of it that we know weren't so good. And we learned from those things. But we got that's the thing. We have to learn from our mistakes. They did, too. And the Talmudim. Yeshua's Talmudim, you know, Yeshua got attacked in the, uh, he, he went, stood up for God, right? He did what was right with the money changers and the, and the other people. And, and of course, the Sanhedrin and some of the Torah teachers were like, uh, what are you doing? That's where we get our that's extra money for us, you know, and well, stuff like that, right? Yeah, 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 it was. Um, but, you know, he still stood his ground and he did what was right. And when they were headed back, the Talmudim looked and there's the fig tree is, and it's withered. And that's a picture for us that Yeshua comes to us. Uh, produced of, of God uh, Rabbi uh, um, I can't think of his name um Rabbi Nachman. Um, uh, I can't think of his name. Schneerson, yeah. Rabbi, Sh Rabbi Schneerson had taught his to his Talmudim. He taught you should always, you know, you should always be ready to give a teaching to somebody. Always be ready. That is, you should always be ready to have fruit for somebody that needs it, right? So that if that or maybe that tree was out of season or whatever, or whatever they say. The thing is, it was producing leaves. It should have been producing fruit, right? And that's us. We might have look good on the outside, right? But where's our fruit? And Rabbi Schneerson used to teach that we should always be ready. We should always have fruit ready, you know. We should always, our, our fruit should be there. We should always be ready to give a teaching to somebody who needs it. Right, who's asking questions? I always be able to answer a question. So, so I, I always say, you know, I'm great, so I just need to learn to carry myself well. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, really, think about it this week. You know, am I just green leaves on the outside, or am I also producing fruit? Am I green leaves and fruit, or am I just good on the outside, or just a bare tree? You know, 
like a very good tasty apple because I can eat worms. Okay. Yeah, well, eat around it. Okay. Eat around it, right? And that's not, it, it's no. not <laughs> about that undying worm. Undying, yeah. 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 Can't think of like yeah, that's out like you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> right. You call that mental yeah. flash of Yeah. 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 And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, the one where they asked him why they couldn't have cheese. You can eat beef. <laughs> no, no, like with, with cheese. Oh, okay. Like why I, you can't eat, like can't eat beef with dairy, yes. Right. Okay. Like, is it, is it no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So, go ahead and we'll go ahead and end here now and um, do the priestly blessing. Bow your heads, please. Our God and God of our fathers, bless us with the threefold blessing in the Torah written by the hand of Moses, your servant, and pronounced by Aharon and his sons, the priests, your holy people, as it is said. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May it be your will. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May it be your will. May the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you peace. <coughs> Vayishmarecha Yair Adonai panabe lecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai panabe lecha Vesem lecha Shalom Have a blessed rest of Shabbat and a blessed week this week. Um, Torah class Wednesday night at 7. Um, the Shabbat service is next Shabbat. And then we'll be camping from the 11th through the 14th during that week, Sunday through Wednesday uh, next week, or the week after this next week. Um, and then on the 17th is Ben's Bar Mitzvah. So we'll be, yep, yep, we're in August now. Right, come on, yeah. So, just go and have a good week. We have family reunion going on, so that's where we'll be at today and tomorrow. Um, and we just praise God and thank Him for all His, all the things He's done for us. You know, even the bad things that happen, we need to learn from, right? Right. Thank yeah. God, even for those, because it teaches us, right? It's how we learn struggles and stuff. So. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Good Shabbos.